Welcome back. Five more in-depth questions. Five more questions to help you pass that CYSA. This is exam number eight. As always, if you're just getting into my channel, there are seven other practice exams that you could go through and uh, and help you pass your exam. Uh, and there's more to come. There's more to come. So let's let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. We're gonna not waste any time. Uh, question number one: A security analyst uses Joe's sandbox to analyze a suspicious file. The sandbox report indicates the following behaviors: creates a new task schedule, scheduled task, excuse me, downloads an additional payload from a remote server, modifies registry keys to maintain persistence, and communicates with multiple IP addresses over port 443. Based on these behaviors, what type of malware is most likely being analyzed? What type of malware is most likely being analyzed when we look at this? What do you think? I feel like this is a good one. You really kind of have to go through and, and understand malware at a level that Security Plus just doesn't make you understand it at. Uh, so a lot of critical thinking on this one, a lot of critical thinking on this. Uh, and there are some hints. There are some hints on this one. So what do you think? Uh, all right, let's 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 start with this one. If you need more time, if you need more time, go ahead and pause the video. Before we do that, though, uh, I want to point out, we want to keep our we want to keep our question answers to about a minute. We've got about a minute per question because we want time at the end of the exam to go through and actually spend some time on our performance-based questions, right? Uh, if we have to, if we don't know the answer, we're just completely lost, then we can hit that little flag at the top right-hand side. And from that flag icon, we can guess and then come back to it at the end of the exam if we have time. But we always want to answer it. Even if it's a blind guess, we want to answer it. Because if we don't answer it and we run out of time, it's 0% chance. If we can knock off, uh, if we answer it, we got we got 25% chance. If we can knock off one answer, we can just eliminate one answer. That's a 33% chance. Knock off uh, two, that's a 50% chance of getting it right. So uh, we want to go through that process of elimination if we're guessing. And you'll see me do that. You'll see me go through this uh, time and time again as we go through these practice exams. All right, let's do this. Uh, a security analyst uses Joe Sandbox to analyze a specific file. The Sandbox report indicates the following. Based on these behaviors, what type of malware is most likely being analyzed? I feel like it's fair to say it's not adware. I feel like it's not adware. And the reason I say it's not adware is because line number two, downloads an additional payload from a remote service. Adware does not usually download uh, additional payloads. That's not normally something associated with adware uh, because adware is trying to add extra ads on there, not additional payloads. Uh, and it's trying to give you more stuff. Would it communicate with multiple IP addresses? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it wouldn't download more payloads. Uh, and it wouldn't modify our registry keys to maintain persistence. That's not, that's not something adware would normally do. Okay. Uh, I feel like spyware is another one we could probably get rid of. Uh, and the reason I say spyware is because spyware is more about looking at your machine. Would it communicate? Yes. Would it create new scheduled tasks? I'm not sure that uh, spyware would do that. I don't think it would. Uh, maybe, maybe if it was, maybe if it was sending off exfiltrated data, right? Then we would see that. We would see the the creating uh, a new task, right? We would schedule tasks to, to exfiltrate the data. Uh, but again, the downloading of additional payload to a remote server from a remote server, not something spyware is going to do. Uh, it's looking at your information. The malware is already there. It's not trying to add more to it. Uh, that leaves ransomware or Trojan. Ransomware or Trojan, both really kind of good answers for this one. It really is. Um, but there's one delimitator in here. One delimitator in here, right? And the fact is, is that we're analyzing a suspicious file. There's nothing in here saying that it's encryption. There's nothing in here that says... Uh, it, it provides an encryption file. There's nothing on there that, that puts in encryption anywhere in there. We don't see anything associated with that. However, Trojans do 100% download additional payloads, right? Because they're doing a backdoor and then they're trying to maintain persistence. That's something they're trying to do. Ransomware isn't really normally trying to maintain persistence. Ransomware is encrypting all your files. They'll communicate to an off server uh, they've already encrypted everything. They're not trying to download additional payloads to maintain access or to do other things with it. They've already done it, right? And so that would be the main delimiter. That means it's going to be D. It's going to be Trojan. I feel like that's that's the only way to be. Uh, and D is going to be our correct answer. All right. I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. Hope we were able to break that one down for you. All right. Question number two. And I would consider that last question to be actually pretty hard, uh, believe it or not. I feel like that's a hard question. All right. Number two. 
An organization classifies its data into different sensitivity levels. Here are the descriptions of the levels. Public, information can be shared with anyone. Internal, information is intended for owner internal use only. Confidential, sensitive information should be protected from unauthorized access. And restricted, highly sensitive information with strict access controls. Which of the following is the best example of data that should be classified as restricted? Which one is the one that should be classified as restricted? We have some files there. I'll give you, I'll give you about a minute to answer this one. I feel like this is, I would throw this in the medium. Low medium is what I would put this in. Not so much easy, but low medium. Because we have to identify word in there. A lot of words in there as well, right? Um, someone will probably ask, do I expect do I expect CompTIA to tell me what the difference between public, internal, confidential, and restricted is? Uh, yes and no. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Uh, if they do, it lowers the point value of the question, I assume. I assume. I'm not positive, but I would assume that it lowers the point value because they're giving you more information. Uh, if they don't, then I would assume that it's worth more points. Uh, because remember, it's scored from 200 to 900. Uh, and so each each question has a point value associated with it based on its based on its complexity. All right. So let's try and answer this one. If you need more time, go ahead and, go ahead and pause the video. Which of the following is the best example of data that should be classified as restricted? I feel like I feel like marketing materials uh, would fall under the internal. I feel like internal may be confidential for marketing materials, right? Uh, when I think marketing materials, I don't think marketing strategy. Uh, I would think marketing materials as in actual marketing materials that we're giving out. Uh, and so I would even say not even confidential, probably public, probably public from marketing material. Definitely not restricted. 100% not restricted. And I think that's why my mind went off to a different place, right? Uh, probably public to at most internal, right? Maybe if it was talking about marketing strategy, I could see confidential, but it's not. It's talking about the actual materials. And so I would say public for that one. Uh, employee names and contact information. Uh, definitely not public. Possibly internal to confidential. I would probably put employee names and contact information uh, strictly in the confidential, right? Uh, well, now actually I put that internal, internal, right? Why, why internal and not confidential? Because employee names and contact information isn't giving them PII. It's just how to reach employees. Uh, and so I would see that as internal. We're not going to publish it on our website, but pretty much anybody could have access to it, right? Uh, when I think contact information, I think home address, maybe their email, maybe their telephone number, just how to get a hold of them. Uh, not something I would consider to be confidential. It's not really sensitive. Uh, now, if we were talking about social security numbers, if we were talking about something like that, uh, 100%, 100%. That leaves trade secrets or customer purchase orders. Well, customer purchase orders, I would relate to internal, internal. I would rate customer purchase orders and internal. I could make the argument for confidential uh, if, if there was a security, maybe if it was related to sensitive information, uh, maybe if they were DOD or somebody else like that, or they were highly, they were like, hey, 100%, I want this to be kept secret. But internal would probably be more of the aspect that I would utilize. But trade secrets, 100% restricted. 100%. Trade secrets are the highest thing. That's how we do our job. That's how we make our money. Uh, and so trade secrets is pretty much the obvious one on this one. Uh, I feel like D is going to be the correct answer. There we go. It's D. All right, question number three. A company conducts regular tabletop exercises to prepare for potential security incidents. During a recent exercise, the team simulated a ransomware attack and discussed the following steps. Identify the infected systems, isolate the network segments, communicate with stakeholders, resort, re, I'm sorry, restore for backups and conduct a post-incident review. What is the primary purpose of conducting a tabletop exercise? What is the primary purpose to conducting a tabletop exercise? I feel like this is a good, a good low to medium question not not exceptionally a hard one i feel like the number one i feel like was a hard one this one not so much uh something you should know for security plus as well but what is the primary purpose of conducting that tabletop exercise what do you think well if you know go ahead and pause the video i'm getting ready to answer it i'm getting ready to answer it i i almost forget i got yelled at by a uh by a uh one of my students who was watching my videos like you didn't give me time to pause and i'm like i'm sorry sorry pause the video pause the video if you need to right uh, what is the primary purpose of conducting a tabletop exercise? Uh, to test the effectiveness of security controls. No, no, we are not actually doing anything. A tabletop exercise is where we gather around a table and we talk about it. We just talk about it. We don't actually do anything. It's like it's like going out and you go to the bar and you're drinking some beers and you're like, what would you do if blah, 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 blah. 
right? Uh, and it's that scenario base, right? That's a table that I would suggest. We're not, we're not interacting with any systems. Uh, so we can't really test the effect of those security controls because we're not doing that. Uh, and so definitely not something we would see in a tabletop exercise. Uh, to identify vulnerabilities in software. I feel like in order to identify vulnerabilities in software, you have to actually be sitting in front of the code. You have to actually go through and, and look at the code. And we're not doing that at a tabletop. Not something we're gonna do. So it can't be B. That leaves C or D, C or D. And I feel like if you notice where I'm coming on from A and B, you probably already identified that D to monitor real-time network traffic is not something we're doing in a tabletop exercise. That means that C, to improve incident response plan through practice, makes the most sense. Now, somebody's probably inevitably going to go, well, you didn't practice anything. Yes, but we talked about it. We talked about it because we know how it works. So we're identifying how the process would go on a piece of paper as we go through it, right? And so kind of a wordplay on that, something I would definitely expect CompTIA to do to kind of throw you off. But the answer is definitely going to be C, to improve incident response plan through practice. There we go. All right. Question number four, a risk assessment report for a web application includes the following risk scores for various vulnerabilities. And we can see SQL at 8.5, cross-site scripting at 6.4, insecure direct object reference at 7.3, and unvalidated redirects and forwards at 5.6. Which vulnerability should be prioritized for remediation based on the risk score? I feel like this is so simple. I would classify this on the very easy one. Uh, I'm not going to give you a lot of time for this one. I'm really not because I feel like this, while it is a question I would expect to see one in CYSA, probably a low point question. I would classify this as very, very easy. Uh, so which vulnerability is it? Well, we literally look at the score and we can see right off the bat that SQL has an 8.5. 8.5 is higher than everything else. That makes answer C to be the best answer. That quick, that easy, uh, 100%. So I would identify SQL as being our correct answer. And there it is, SQL. Uh, very easy, very, very easy. All right, question number five, last question for the night. During a security review, an analyst is examining application logs to identify potential security incidents. The logs show the following entry. And we can see unauthorized access attempt detected, user login successful, multiple failed login attempts from user admin, uh, and unauthorized access attempts detected from user admin. Uh, all right, what action should be the analyst take based on this log entry? I'm gonna give you a second to read through this because I know I did a quick snippet, but we always know there's more information out there. So what are we looking at here? And what does the analyst, what should we take away from this? What should we take away? Uh, what's, the, what's the action we should take from this, I should say? All right, uh, if you need more time, if you need more time, go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and pause that video if you need more time. We're gonna answer it. What action should the analyst take based on this log entry? Well, if you said A, ignore the log entry as a false positive, you'd be incorrect. I don't see any indicators saying this is a false positive. There's nothing on here that, that provides kind of an avenue for a false positive. So I feel like that's an easy one to get rid of. Um, that leaves us investigate the source of the unauthorized access attempt, reset the password, or disable the admin. And so I feel like we really need to understand what's going on here. So let's let's start with D. Disable the admin user account immediately. Uh, unauthorized access attempt detected for user admin, and it gives us an IP address. Uh, and we can see unauthorized access attempt for user admin, again, and a different IP address on lines one and four. Um, and so they try to gain access, but they didn't. And all this is basically saying is that somebody tried to log in as an admin. Uh, our password seems to be secure. We don't have any problems with it. Um, oh, there's line number not line number three. Multiple failed login attempts, user admin from another IP address at, at .100, right? And so we can see here, based on this log attempt, that .100 is trying to access our admin account. Uh, probably doing a brute force attack would be my guess because there's multiple failed login attempts. Uh, would we disable the admin user account for that? No, no, we wouldn't disable that. That's not something we would do, right? Uh, and so I don't see anything else for, for admin. Uh, what about, what about J Smith? Uh, login attempt successful for J Smith. Now we're seeing a brute force attack for admin and we're seeing J Smith logged in successfully. Uh, and we can look at it and we see that was literally, what is that? 35 seconds, 30 seconds beforehand or after a unauthorized attempt, but there's nothing here 
showing that there was where this where this J Smith person or this user ID for J Smith um, was trying to be brute force. We don't see the same IP address. We don't see anything else associated. I think the J Smith one is just regular traffic, uh, and that's indicative of regular traffic. So why would we require J Smith to reset his password based on regular traffic? I don't feel like that's a thing. Uh, and then we have investigate the source of the unauthorized access attempts. I feel like that's going to be the answer. Uh, B makes the most sense. Investigate the source of the unauthorized access attempts. Uh, it's going through. Uh, because if it's on our network, we want to find out what's going on with that network. Is it somebody who just forgot their password? Uh, or is it someone trying to brute force the system? Uh, and that's where it comes into play. Uh, probably the latter. Probably the latter. All right. Uh, that's the last question. The answer is going to be B on that one.